Hello, welcome to another episode of Office Hours with the Math Sorcerer. In today's episode, I'm going to answer an email I received from a viewer. This email is a little bit different. It's not the type of email that I usually get. So when I saw it, I glanced at it and I thought, okay, I think I have an answer. Let me just make a video here really quickly. If you're watching this on Spotify, make sure to follow. If you're watching this on YouTube via podcast, make sure to subscribe. And if you're watching this on my regular YouTube channel, Leave a comment if you have any advice for this person. All right, I'm gonna open up the email and see what it says here. So the person's name is Isuru, and I'll leave his or her, I don't know, their, their last name out of it. Can you make a video about the foundations of math? Hi, Math Sorcerer, my name is Isuru, and I am a fan of your channel. I am a philosophy student who has recently got into math and wanted to know if you could possibly make a video on the foundations of math. I have recently been reading about the definition of numbers, set theory, and categories, and the work of Bertrand Russell. Wow. I wanted to hear your take on the topic of the foundations and the general perspective of a math professor on this as opposed to philosophy professors. Kind regards, Isuru. That's an interesting question. So this is going to be a hard one for me to answer because... <laughs> I have studied the foundations of mathematics, you know, uh, quite a bit, you know, in every in every math class you take in college, and I took a ton of college classes, you always start with set theory. Every every advanced math book typically starts with with set theory. Like I have a book here, it's sitting here. It's um, advanced calculus, and I bet if I open it up, it starts with like some preliminary stuff. Yeah, it starts with starts with the completeness axiom, the numbers, yeah, so it starts with like really, really basic stuff, like the foundational stuff, uh, positivity axioms. I don't know if you could see that. There we go. The positivity axioms. Yeah, so really basic stuff that um, is foundational. So my take on the foundational stuff, and this is not, you know, how it should be, or I'm not saying everyone should think this way. This is just my opinion, okay? It might not be a popular one, is that, you know, you learn it and you move on, right? You, you move on to more stuff because... Math builds. Now, I think it's really important to be aware of the foundational stuff. For example, the Archimedean property is something that is used all the time in, in, in analysis and advanced calculus. Loosely speaking, it says if you have a number, you can find the number that's bigger, right? That, that's the idea. Given any number, you can always find a bigger number. And that's really useful for writing proofs. So stuff like that that you use is very, very beneficial. But other than that, I think that in math, you you just move forward because there's so much more. So, yeah, that that's what I think. As a philosophy major, I think your take is a little bit different. You're more really really interested in it, and you know maybe you're looking at like the piano axioms and stuff, and you're really getting into the nitty gritty. But most of the time, I think most math people they see that they're exposed to that, but then they're forced to move on because they have to learn so much more math. Right? You're taking these math classes, and you have to learn tons of deep rich mathematics, and so you don't really have a lot of time to like sit there and dwell and ponder on on the foundations. And again, you see them in every class. So again, like here's another book I have that I was recommending uh, to someone. This one is Abstract Algebra with the Concrete Introduction by Beachy and Blair. And this one also starts with uh, foundational, yeah, starts with the integers. So it's like, yeah, divisors, starts with like numbers, some number theory congruences. So really basic stuff with numbers and some number theory, which is needed for for abstract algebra. So, yeah, that's my take on it. It's, I mean, I'm not I'm not dismissing it, but I'm just saying that it's something that you're exposed to, you appreciate it, you learn it, but you move on. That's that's typically how I approach it, and I think that's how most people who've taught math approach it in a classroom setting, because you just you just have to move on. But it's interesting. It's interesting. There's some people who really really focus on that. There's people who just study like logic and sets. Um, you know, I have entire books on logic. <laughs> so I need to review one. I don't think I ever have. I actually have a book on books on logic. It's like the whole book is on logic, but I've never really talked about those books because they're, they're, they're just really niche. Um, very, very specific. So that's my advice on the foundation. That's my take on it. Different people have different opinions. There's some people who spend a lot more time on that. Um, you know, everyone likes different types of math. There's different types of math. And I always think like the foundational math, that's a certain area of math in some sense. Like it's like the foundational stuff, you know. Um, I just take it and move on with it and, and grow. 
So yeah, that's my take. Uh, as far as learning foundational math, you mentioned, let me just go back to your email here. You mentioned that you were uh, recently been reading about the definition of numbers, wow, set theory and category. So pretty advanced stuff. Uh, it must be pretty heavy reading. So you obviously must be very good at math. And the work of Bertrand Russell, yeah, that is, that is, you know, not, uh, you know, definitely harder reading than a lot of other math books, you know, a lot of other works. So definitely requires some maturity. So obviously um, you have some, some skills, right, to go from philosophy to reading that stuff on your own. That's pretty impressive. But yeah, I, I would say you should try to move on and, and see what else you can learn, right? Uh, try to learn to write proofs. If you can learn to write proofs, um, then you can learn even more math. And I think, I think you'll appreciate it uh, a lot more, a lot more. You'll definitely get a much deeper understanding than your philosophy professors. You'll know more than they do, right? Because they're philosophy professors. One thing I've found with people who have expressed interest in foundational mathematics, and this is just from personal experience from students I've had in the past, is that they typically have a genuine interest in like learning mathematics. And that sounds like you. It sounds like you have like this genuine interest in like learning mathematics, which is good. I really, really think that you would benefit from learning to write proofs and that will really take it to the next level because once you learn to write proofs you can you can study all kinds of math so to learn to write proofs i'd recommend um a free book it's online it's called book of proof and th the fact that it's free is good for two reasons one it's free you don't have to spend any money but that's not really the best part about the book being free it's that it's accessible, right? You can access it no matter where you live in the world. I don't know where you're located, but you have internet, <laughs> so you can download it. So that's the best thing about free books is that anyone in the world can download it. Whereas books that you have to buy, sure you have to buy them, but they're hard to get because if they're like in another country and you have to ship from another country, a lot of times the seller won't ship or it's just really hard to find, right? It's hard to find things. Um, from other countries. For example, I, I collect math books in Spanish. It's very hard to find math books in Spanish in the US. Another book that I recommend, I don't know if you'll be able to buy it where you're located, but it's very good. It's this one here, How to Read and Do Proofs by Daniel Solo. This is a great book uh, for learning to write proofs. And again, it'll take your foundational stuff, I think to the next level, and you're really gonna like it. A better book, which I like, which I can't find. I looked for it prior to making this video because I wanted to show it to you. <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's the book by Velman. Okay, the book by Velman is an excellent book for proof writing. It's so nice. It's it's uh, soft cover and it's, you can just lay in bed and read it before you go to bed. You can sit down with a paper and pencil and try to work through the proofs. It's got a good mix. You, you can read and you can work through it carefully. It's just a really all around great book and it's not that expensive. It's a paperback, but it's worth it. It's probably one of the best books out there uh, for writing proofs. I like it better than Book of Proof, which is free. It's just my opinion. Book of Proof is excellent, though. It's, it's a great book, and I've spent a lot of time looking at it. I've done quite a bit of exercises from it, and I've read portions of sections, and I've looked at about 80% of the book, so it's a good book. So yeah, foundational mathematics, uh, that's my advice. Take it further, right? Go take, take, a, take it a step further. If anyone else has advice uh, and you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment in the comment section below. People read the comments. And when you leave advice for people, it helps other people. So yeah, until next time, good luck. Take care.